right, it is time for another Blitz game today. Let's actually play D4 this time and get something a bit different. Maybe something I don't see every day. I don't play these openings with white and tournament chess, so I don't have too much preparation here. And we might be getting a, uh, a King's Indian or a Grunfeld kind of opening right now. Um, so let's go for the King's Indian. So E4. And I think I'll play the Overbach variation with Bishop E2 and Bishop G5. And we'll see how that goes. I know one of the ideas there is it can stop uh, stop Black from playing e5 too early in some cases. I'm trying to remember how the tactic works, um, but I know that in some cases Black can't really play the early e5. I don't really know any theory here. All I know is the ideas, and I don't really want to go for some uh, you know some big main line in the Mardell Plata or one of the you know opposite side uh, wing attacks kind of situation. Um, if I can help it, yeah, c5 is the typical response. And I was thinking maybe I could even play like f4 and try to get all four pawns involved. I'm not sure if that's theory. It just looks maybe appealing to me. Um, and after h6, I wonder if now I can drop back and try to eye this uh, this h6 pawn. I guess you always have king h7. But maybe bishop h4 is more uh, more consistent. Especially because we haven't castled short yet. So if you play g5, maybe we even castle long in some lines and try to attack you uh, attack you on the king side. I'll be curious to look up the opening after the game and see what the branching point was and uh, where one of us kind of deviated from established practice. Because like I said, I know pretty much nothing about this line. Yeah, a6, you want to play b5. That's pretty typical in this pawn structure. You see it in like uh, the Benoni and other lines like that. I don't think you can play b5 right now, though. Or maybe you can. There's some tactics to watch out for. b5, takes, takes, bishop takes. Do you have any idea with knight takes e4 followed by queen a5 check? No, you don't, because we have knight back to... Well, no, because then you remove the defender. There's a long line there to calculate. I can show it after the game. Um, I'll just play a4, because why not? Just stop b5. <laughs> okay, and now you can play that. Yeah, I've seen this idea, too. And now after I commit a4, you bring the knight this way. Let's play f4, though. Let's go for this super ambitious idea and just see if it works. I'm guessing you probably strike against the center with e6 at some point, but you have to watch out for e5, I think. So knight f3, and why can't I just play e5 now? It looks pretty appealing to me. I guess you're just going to drop back to d7, and you're going to have lots of pressure on the e5 pawn, though, aren't you? I'm just wondering, can we make d6 work with pins uh, with pins like that? There's a lot to uh, to consider, isn't there? So e5 takes, takes, knight d7. Let's clear the arrows. e5 takes, takes, knight d7. If we play d6, then you take on e5. Then we have bishop takes e7. But maybe you can throw in g5 in some cases, because our f pawn's not there anymore. Five takes takes knight e7. I'm probably gonna spend way too much time calculating it and then just not doing it. So let's just let's just get it over with. <laughs> Save some time on the clock. Down by about 50 seconds. I'd still like to play e5 though, especially if you played a move like bishop d7 here, some bad move like that. Then I think e5 is a lot stronger because you don't have knight d7. I mean, you still have to be careful about playing e6, because there's pins. Okay, that's what I expected. Um, let's secure the pair of bishops. It's probably not a very pointed move. There's probably better we could do, but I kind of like just getting the pair of bishops. Now I can play, like, queen e2, rook a to e1, and just slowly prepare e5, and just try to bulldoze black in the center. I think we stopped all their queenside counterplay. I mean, they got this knight on b4, but who cares? It can't do anything, I don't think. Now can we play e5? There's no more knight d7. So e5 takes takes, and where do you put the knight? I guess knight e8. Um, but that looks pretty appealing for us. I just don't like that you play queen, uh, queen f5, though. Let's just build up slowly. There's no rush, I don't think. Black has almost no counterplay, as far as I can see. So I'll play queen e2. Oh, I see. You just wanted to play that. Maybe I shouldn't have allowed that. So if I play e5 here, though... I think this makes sense, because you can't play knight d7, and uh, if you take, we can make a passed pawn. I think the problem might be, what if you just play knight e8 right away? And then I don't know how to resolve this pawn tension effectively. Maybe I just take twice and then go after the e6 weakness? That does make some sense. Or maybe take here and go after d6 as a backwards pawn. Just take, and then play rook d1. But the problem is f4 is hanging there too. Um, so it's not totally clear to me how to handle this. What are black's options? I think they do have to take back. They could take with the queen. And now what? e5 really is hanging. If we take... I guess you swap queens? You don't have any threats, but uh, I'm not sure if we really have an advantage anymore. 
I felt like we were better. I guess something went wrong. <laughs> yeah, I think I underestimated your threat to just play e6. Or maybe we had a better idea there. It, it'll be uh, interesting to go back and check. We do have two strong bishops in an open position. Only down 20 seconds on the clock. Okay. Queens do, in fact, come off. I'd like to take with the knight, but I don't, I don't think we can sack the b2 pawn, unfortunately. And now you're going to take it back. And maybe I come back. Maybe I just play rook a to d1 right away. Seems to make some sense. You can play knight f, uh, knight f5. I'd play bishop f2. Okay, you have an in-between check. Let's just, uh, let's play back. Because this bishop doesn't do a whole lot anymore. And I think here you have to exchange bishops one way or the other. I know that gets rid of our bishop pair, but, uh, I guess, oh well. So your knight can't really infiltrate yet, I don't think. Let's play rook a to d1. I guess you want to play knight f5, though, and think about coming to, uh, to d4. I was thinking there maybe knight b5. Okay, that's understandable. Let's improve the bishop. Or do we play g4 first and just deprive the knight of all the squares? Yeah, we can't play bishop f3 yet because c4 is hanging. So let's play g4. I just want to keep this knight out of all the squares. Kind of a good idea there. And now if rook f8, maybe even knight d5? But then knight e4. You have knight e4 check if you play knight d5. Okay, let's uh, let's solidify this guy so I can play bishop f3. Go after this pawn. Bishop f3, your knight has no good squares. That's what I'm going for. And then next, maybe rook f1 or knight d5. Okay, where's the knight headed? Guess it wants to come to d4. That's kind of annoying, um, especially because this pawn's hanging, huh? So I guess we don't really have a choice. We'll just defend it like this. Knight d4, rook d3. I, mean, I think everything's safe. I just don't think we're really much better, or better at all. Still like how restricted this knight is. You could take and try to play knight e4. Um, and then how would I handle that? Kind of trying to see. We're up on time now. This is going to be a time scramble. We're down to 10 seconds. Really? Okay. Rook e1 I think is safe. Trying to double check. Double check. You have no threats. No checks. Nothing. Okay. You can double though. You can double. And that's not great for us, is it? Rook e3. Oh, no, 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 what am I doing? I'm blundering the pawn. Um, and now we have to just hope we can defend everything and march in. I like how frozen your majority is, though. Your pawn majority is really frozen. But that was stupid. Okay, our king's super active, though. I, I don't think black's playing this right. Your knight's kind of frozen. Okay. Your king is, too. <laughs> okay, let's lock you out. You're almost like in Zugzwang, because if you move the knight, yeah, we can start taking stuff. <laughs> Ooh, which, which side's majority is going to be better? It's hard to say. Let's threaten stuff. <laughs> I want to play king b6. Yeah, here, threaten this guy. Can you even defend it? Probably not. Uh, come in. The a pawn's strong. The knight has trouble dealing with the rook pawn, doesn't it? So let's take and just threaten to push. Ah, uh, but you're going to sack for the last pawn. I have to defend this guy. Okay, that bought us some time. And you're not threatening anything, because if you push to f2, we have the uh, we have the fork. I just want to keep this knight out of the action. Does this work? All right, we have, we have time. No rush, no rush. There's an increment. We can calculate. This is the last decision. Takes, takes, a6. King b6. No, 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 no. No, this doesn't work. Check. What am I doing? Takes, and it's a draw. Did I miss something there? I feel like I missed something there. That's disappointing. But okay, let's take a look. I felt like that endgame was winning for me at some point. Even down the pond. <laughs> so, so let's take a look. So I played the uh, the King's Indian. And this is a standard Averbach, I think. I'm just curious to check. Yeah, the Averbach variation. C5 is the main uh, move here. I'm kind of curious to remember why this particular setup stops E5. I hate how it does that. Self-analysis. Uh, go back. 
I'm kind of curious why black can't play e5. I remember there being some tactic here. Um, if I remember correctly, yeah, okay, it's just takes, and you swap, and, uh, and knight d5 wins for white. So you do stop e5. So black usually goes for their other break, which is pawn to c5. And I'm kind of curious. Uh, yeah, d5 is the main move. h6 is most popular. Um, looks like bishop h4 is not too popular, but it has been played. I think my original idea of bishop e3 might make more sense, or bishop f4. Um, but I guess the bishop's not so great on h4 anymore. I'm just used to a line I play against the perk defense when I play e4 that features this uh, this bishop retreat. Um, so here, yeah, I thought black should strike very quickly with e6 um, before I'm threatening e5. I haven't played f4 yet um, to avoid what happened in the game. a6, yeah, a4 is a move, and I've seen this a5 idea trying to bring the knight to b4 now that I've weakened the square. It looks like queen a5 is the only move that's been played. So I think here is where we're finally kind of on our own after black plays this a5 idea. And really, I feel like I got a very pleasant position here, especially considering it's an opening I, I know nothing about. <laughs> so after f4, white has a big space advantage, and it seems pretty hard to play for black. So I'm kind of curious to see... I think a key moment here was uh, allowing this e6 pawn break. So queen d7 threatens to play e6. And I feel like just strategically, white has to be totally winning here. Just the two bishops, the, the dominating center, the threat to play e5. So what if we play e5 right now? So e5, and what am I worried about? I was worried about, I guess, knight e8, or maybe takes, takes, knight e8. Let's say takes, takes, and either knight h7, knight e8. Um, and I said I was worried about queen f5. That's so stupid. Like, <laughs> certainly white's way, way better here. I thought I, I thought I had to defend this pawn with, like, queen e2. There's no queen f5, I don't think. If queen f5, I guess that is a double attack on e5 and trying to maybe infiltrate to c2 somehow. But, I mean, if nothing else, e7's hanging. Uh, I don't feel like black can play this way. Seems, uh, <laughs> seems very suspicious. White has such a big center. So I think allowing this e6 break might have not been great. But even still, after e5 kicking the knight away, is there really nothing better for me than just mass liquidations here? This would definitely be a good position to uh, to do some thinking in if this was a longer time control game. I'm wondering, can we just be greedy and grab the b7 pawn right now? Just d takes e6, um, and if you take with the queen like in the game, why didn't we just take on b7 now with tempo? Because um, that seems to make sense. Bishop takes b7 with tempo, and now we can come back to d5, possibly. And uh, I guess I didn't really consider this because of this knight for bishop exchange, but uh, I think this has to be great for us. So I'm sure there was a way to get kind of a completely winning position there out of the opening. I think I totally outplayed black in the opening and uh, kind of missed my chance around here. Now now that we just got these kind of uh, mass liquidations, and now I'm not sure how much uh, better white is anymore, if at all. I'm kind of curious to see a computer's opinion. Um, yeah, just about equal. So that's unfortunate. Blew my chance to, uh, to really get a nice opening win in an opening I know nothing about. And now we played some, you know, kind of boring, you know, late middle game, queenless middle game stuff, just consolidating. What I'm really curious about is this end game, though, um, after the pieces come off. Okay, so I, I lose the pawn, but I, I, maybe it's not such a big deal, because this uh, this knight really uh, dominates, shuts down the extra pawn, defends all my pawns, and I just march the king in. Now, certainly here, black should have just played king f6, and black's better, for sure. Black might even be winning, because an extra pawn's an extra pawn in, uh, in a knight end game. But for some reason, they let my king march all the way in and do all these weird uh, weird pawn moves. Um, so is this position winning for white? I'm kind of curious to see what an engine thinks, but just on a human level, like, black's almost in Zugzwang. You don't want to move the knight because you're going to lose material. And uh, if you move the king, you get maybe outflanked king and pawn endgame style, or maybe I just start running and picking up your b-pawn. Um, so I'm kind of curious. Yeah, white is definitely better here, even down the pawn in an endgame, which is pretty rare. That's how powerful this active king is. And that's why in the endgame you have to activate your king. When you have an endgame position, don't be doing what black's doing here, playing weird moves like h5. You have to bring this king into the game. Um, not playing h5 and letting my king run all the way to d6. Um, so here, where did I blow this? So takes... Um, there's probably better options here, but I thought even later on, even all the way in this position, I thought my A pawn was strong enough to be winning, but maybe it's not. Here I was afraid if I played A5 right away, you just take this pawn, sack the knight for my pawn somehow, you have a check, and then, um, you should draw, so I defend my pawn, F4, A5, Knight D8, and is this really a draw? No. Okay, there was a win. Uh, does King C8 ruin it? King C8 ruins it. Interesting. Um, so what's the difference here? King c8 is a draw, king c7 is a win. Well, I guess it's kind of obvious looking at it. You just don't want to let the knight come to c6. If the knight can't come to c6, then I guess it should be a draw. 
Also, the king watching over b6 seems very important. Um, so I'm not sure what I was thinking there. I think it was just like pattern recognition in my in my brain. I, I don't want the king diagonal from the knight because I know you can give checks. For some reason, I thought the king next to the knight is better because you can't give any checks. But it's much more important to stop knight c6, um, which I should have saw, especially with a two-second increment. Um, king c7 definitely is a move I should have found, and I think white has a win there. But in the end game, I blew it. King c8, and now this should just be a draw. I saw no solution here. The computer agreed. Um, and there's nothing better to do than try to pick up this pawn and secure the draw. All right, thanks for watching, everyone. Please make sure you visit chesspathways.com and get signed up there. Totally free. Only takes a few seconds, and I will send you a free move-by-move -move guide to chess thinking when you sign up. It took me way too long to become a chess master, and I want to help you do it in a fraction of the time. As well, please click the like button down below, and please subscribe to the channel. I appreciate all the support. Thanks, and I will see you all soon.